Hello, this is Jeff Johnson, creator of Fingers Gestures for Unity. I just wanted to demo my first and third person controllers that I've whipped up for you all. So let's dive right in. The text over here on the left explains this first person controller. What I've done is I've set up a first person prefab that inside has a main camera and also has a feet object. The feet object is very important for being able to jump. So I've set it up so that when you tap, it will jump. In the first person mode, as you move the mouse up, you will move forward. And as you move it back, you move backwards. Let's get a nice view of the whole map here so you can see this moving around. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Now you'll notice that wherever the mouse goes down, that becomes the center of a virtual joystick. So it allows the player to move from anywhere that they desire rather than having to press on a specific joystick. Now some people like to have a joystick that's static and that's fine. You can certainly wire up the fingers gestures joystick to this controller as well instead of using the virtual joystick. That's totally fine. When you move left or right you will rotate. As you move further away from the start point you rotate faster and you can rotate this direction as well and you can see that it's very easy to move around and jump in a game with only needing one finger to move forward and rotate. All of the parameters are configurable. You have a move speed. This controls how fast the player moves. As the finger gets further from the center, the move speed hits the max move speed here. Move power controls how fast the movement happens as the finger moves away from the center. So with a move power of 0.5 my move will accelerate pretty rapidly as I move away from the center, but you could set this to be higher and the move would accelerate more slowly. Rotate speed and rotation power work exactly the same way. Jump speed is just the force of a jump. If I lower this I won't jump as high or I can jump really high. Jump cooldown basically says how often to wait before the player can jump again. Uh, using the jump mask you can control what kind of things the player can jump off of. Right now it's set to everything but you could make a, a platform mask or a ground mask and then only when the player's feet are intersecting or colliding with those specific masks would you be allowed to jump. Let's take a look at this Fingers Joystick Anywhere component script. This is new in Fingers 4.5. We've got pan units for maximum, so basically this says how many units away from the center before I hit maximum rotation or move speed. I believe it's set to about one inch right now. That looks about right. But you can increase or decrease this to make the circle of your virtual joystick larger, basically. Tap to jump just basically says, are they allowed to jump? You can get rid of that if you have your own jumping mechanism. You can restrict the pan and tap gestures to specific game objects on your scene. These could be UI images or game objects. Right now they're set to none, so you can tap or pan anywhere. It's pan anchor and pan anchor line. Let's take a look at that. So we've got this pan anchor. All it is is a knob, and the line is just a background image that gets stretched and that's what you're seeing here when the player moves. If you've got your own images and you want to change those please do so or you can leave these uh, properties as null and those won't show up at all. This fingers joystick anywhere supports cross-platform input as well. You can specify horizontal, vertical, and jump access names if you're going to wire this into your own controller but for my purposes it's tied up to my specific first person script. And here you can see that we've got the pan gesture callback for movement which goes to this first person controller script along with the tap callback also goes to the first person script for jumping. That's how easy it is to start a first person controller with finger gestures. Hope you enjoyed this video. 
Appreciate your time. Thanks for watching. Please email me, support at digitalruby.com if you have any questions. I'd love to help you out or see how your game is coming along. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day.